ISO 8s for the Asgardians. What's up, guys? Uh, this is going to be quick because the Asgardians aren't a absolutely difficult team to figure out. Uh, they have very obvious choices and very inobvious choices. We'll start with Hela. Hela uh, is a damage dealing character, so that's it. Can you uh, justify healer? No, because uh, even though she does heal herself a little bit, uh, it, it doesn't make a difference. You know, she don't need her to heal herself. So healer, not incredibly relevant. Plus her health pool is okay. It's not great, not wonderful. She's a damage dealer. So you want either striker or raider. Um, on war defense, uh, raider tends to be worse because on turn one when she does it, it won't crit because most of the characters will already have their deflux from hanger buff. Um, so unless hangers down, it's not going to do much. Uh, but uh, it can be relevant when you use this team offensively or her offensively. So Raider is a good option. In general, Striker though will just be great. One of the reasons why is because it increases her damage stat, which of course bleeds into uh, other assets like Greg. Uh, you know, Greg's stats are based on her stats. Greg becomes stronger overall. So, reasonable, right? All things considered, damage is fine. Now, Skirmisher is a great option for her as well. Uh, unfortunately, Greg doesn't get any of those abilities. We know that, so that's not a big deal. But uh, removing the buffs for, with Black Blade, with Command Undead, or with Death Knives is relevant. Skirmisher is a great option on Hela. I don't believe it's necessary on the Asgardians, so I think you have better options for Skirmisher. I think she represents one of the big damage dealers on your team, next to Thor. I don't think anyone else really does much damage, so you really want to lean into the damage where it comes in. Uh, moving to Thor, uh, again, another character. You can put crit on him, but... Since uh, any t opportunity for this special crazy attack to go in and crit, uh, it won't put the ability on. It won't put the uh, vulnerability on. Sorry. Eh, you lose a little bit. I think Raider is reasonable. Um, totally. Uh, I don't like Skirmisher on this almost at all. Again, it won't proc on this and he doesn't assist too often. Um, but I do like pure damage. Because pure damage is uh, relevant on this character. He's constantly hitting multiple people. So Lightning Storm, Raider is a reasonable option if you just want an outcome of damage. Uh, Hammer Throw will hit multiple targets. It's a little bugged right now in the game, so I don't use it that often. But if it did, I think it's reasonable to put Raider on him. And then Hammer Uppercut is fine. One of the things that stands out, though, is when you have damage on him, his extra, his ISO 8 extra attack, because his damage stat is ridiculously high at a lot of levels. Uh, it's it's a big chunk of extra damage. Like as of right now, this is seventy five percent of this attack. You know, um, so I think damage and raider are reasonable. I don't really like skirmisher on him. He he's not he's the damage dealer. You make him do damage, whether it be through pure unadulterated numbers or through crit chance. That's reasonable. Anything else unnecessary. Loki uh, Loki again is another character where. It doesn't matter how much you invest. You only invest in him to make him survivable, right? Mind control is his bread and butter. Mirror image only affects you. It doesn't do anything to your opponents. Um, so Skirmisher is kind of out. He never really does damage on his own. Mind control doesn't do any damage. Um, so even though Skirmisher works with these two, doesn't with this. Uh, Raider is completely useless on him. Healer, he doesn't. he's not well known for having a health pool. Uh, to me, it's it's just keep him alive, you know, and then on the off chance you decide it's worth a little bit more investment, uh, it's enough, you know. I guess you can justify Striker, which might make his summons do a little bit more damage, but for the most part, this is why you have Loki. Uh, resistance against your enemies, focus, and resistance for M Mystic Controller characters on your team. On turn, he'll sell for as Guardians, like... You just want him to stay alive, you know? You want him to be alive long enough to keep the team up. So for me, it's like Fortifier, just because he doesn't quite gain a lot of value from anything else as of right now. Uh, and Heimdall, Heimdall is kind of the de facto Raider character, because the first two things he does between Divine Foresight and Sworn Oath is hit everybody. The first one is a three-person hit, Sworn Oath is a multi-person hit, and then it doesn't quite matter what happens 
at this point in the game, like once he's using his basic, uh, because that's all he has to do. He does decent damage, but I think we all know Heimdall's kind of the weakest member of the Asgardian team. So because of that, uh, it's just easier overall, you know, resistance against blind, to to just give him the chance to proc those raids, uh, those raider uh, vulnerabilities on crit, and hope it balances out. You can justify quite a bit on him, but I think, like, you need someone with raider, he's got the kit that makes sense with it, and it, it benefits uh, your entire team dramatically without you having to invest too much into him in the first place. Like, even look at here, I don't even have Raider rank 2. You know, like, I think that the 25% chance is good enough uh, for him to get it done because nothing else really matters. Maybe I'd move more, but not anytime soon. And then we have Sif. I have Sif at Skirmisher. A lot of the reason why is the counterattacks that are placed on her through her shield slam. She has three counters, which means the next three people that hit her are most likely going to have a, you know, vulnerable stack placed on her uh, or placed from her. So reasonable as far as I'm concerned. Uh, other than that, she really doesn't do much. She's okay at damage, but not great. You could give her vulner um, fortifier to keep her alive a lot, but like between the defense ups and the counters and the deflex. Uh, it's very unlikely she's going to die. Honestly, it's probably worthwhile for you to invest in her. And then the fact that she's countering and giving you a decent chunk of extra vulnerables is just going to make your Hela and your Thor do so much extra bonus damage as time goes on. But that's it. It's very simple as Guardians. Uh, you can make a couple of arguments here and there for a bunch of other characters. Uh, they don't really need the sustain because they have either independent sustain or Hela's, uh, you know... Greg sustain. They're no longer the amazing team they were in war defense because now there's like three to five counters for them as opposed to before where there was just like, you know, Black Order and Phoenix kind of stuff. Now there's teams that are specifically designed to beat them up. So there's really not that big of a deal uh, when it comes to using them there. But there are plenty of other options to use this team. They're also fine on war offense. Um, they're also fine as a raid team. They're also necessary for certain campaign nodes. And through all of that stuff, uh, these are the ISOs that I have chosen to put on the characters. And these are the ISOs that have helped me, you know, with this team as time progresses. So comment below, let me know uh, if there's any major deviation. Obviously, Hell and Thor are the biggest points of contention. So feel free to let me know those. But I'm really paying attention to characters like Loki, Heimdall, and Sif and what you have on those guys. Anyway, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Skinjili, and I'll catch you later.